Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the muscles of the gluteal region. As an introduction, we have 10 muscles of the gluteal region. 3 gluteus muscles, 2 gemellus muscles, 2 obturator muscles, the piriformis, quadratus femoris and the tensor fascia latae. So in detail, we have gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, gemellus superior, gemellus inferior, the obturator internus, obturator externus, piriformis, quadratus femoris and finally the tensor fascia latae. Now let's look into these muscles in detail. Firstly, we have the gluteus maximus. It originates from the outer slope of the dorsal segment of the iliac crest, the posterior gluteal line, the posterior part of the gluteal surface of the ilium behind the posterior gluteal line, the aponeurosis of erector spinae, the dorsal surface of the lower part of sacrum, side of coccyx, the sacrotuberous ligament and from the fascia covering the gluteus medius. This is the right hip bone. This is the gluteal surface of the hip bone and this is the iliac crest. The gluteus maximus muscle originates from the outer slope of the dorsal segment of the iliac crest that is right here. It originates from the posterior gluteal line which is right here. This is the anterior gluteal line and this is the inferior gluteal line. So the gluteus maximus muscle originates from the posterior gluteal line as well as the posterior part of the gluteal surface of the ilium behind the posterior gluteal line that is right here. It originates from the aponeurosis of erector spinae. Now the erector spinae muscle originates right here and the gluteus maximus also has an origin from the aponeurosis of the erector spinae muscle. It also originates from a fascia covering the gluteus medius muscle. The red color right here is the origin of the gluteus medius muscle. The gluteus maximus muscle has its origin in the sacrum and coccyx as well. This is the sacrum and this is the coccyx. The muscle originates from the dorsal surface of the lower part of the sacrum that is right here. It originates from the side of the coccyx as well as the sacrotuberous ligament. The deep fibers of the lower part of the muscle are inserted into the gluteal tuberosity while the greater part of the muscle is inserted into the iliotibial tract. This is the right femur and the deep fibers of the lower part of the gluteus maximus muscle is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity right here. The greater part of the muscle is inserted into the iliotibial tract as you can see right here. The gluteus maximus is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve and its action is that it is a chief extensor of the thigh at the hip joint. The other actions of the gluteus maximus are the lateral rotation of the thigh and the abduction of the thigh. We can brief the origin and insertion of the gluteus maximus muscle by looking at this diagram. As you can see, this is the sacrum, this is the coccyx, this structure is the hip bone right here, this is the femur. So, looking at the origin of the gluteus maximus muscle, it originates from the outer slope of the dorsal segment of the iliac crest, as you can see right here, the posterior gluteal line, the posterior part of the gluteal surface of the ilium, right behind the posterior gluteal line, that is right here, the aponeurosis of the erector spinae, which cannot be seen in this diagram, the dorsal surface of the lower part of the sacrum, right here, the side of the coccyx, the sacrotuberous ligament, which cannot be seen in this diagram, and finally, the fascia covering the gluteus medius muscle. Moving on to the insertion, the deep fibers of the lower part of the muscle are inserted into the gluteal tuberosity right here, that is one fourth of the gluteus maximus muscle is inserted right here. The greater part of the muscle is inserted into the iliotibial tract, 
that is three fourth of the part of the muscle is inserted into the iliotibial tract. This is the posterior view of the right lower limb. The muscle you see here is the gluteus maximus muscle. Nextly, we have the gluteus medius. It originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior and posterior gluteal lines. The gluteus medius muscle originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior and posterior gluteal lines, that is right here. It inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur on an oblique ridge on the lateral surface. This is the right femur. The gluteus medius muscle is inserted into the greater trochanter of the femur on an oblique ridge on the lateral surface, right here. The gluteus medius is supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. The action is that it is a powerful abductor of the thigh. The anterior fibers are medial rotators which maintain the balance of the body when the opposite foot is off the ground as in walking. Now, as a whole, the gluteus medius muscle originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior gluteal line and the posterior gluteal line that is right here and it inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur on an oblique ridge on the lateral surface right here. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the gluteus minimus. It originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior and inferior gluteal lines. The gluteus minimus originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior and inferior gluteal lines, that is right here. It inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur on a ridge on its anterior surface. The gluteus minimus muscle inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur on a ridge in its anterior surface, that is right here. The gluteus minimus muscle is also supplied by the superior gluteal nerve and its action is similar to that of the gluteus medius. That is, it is a powerful abductor of the thigh. The anterior fibers are medial rotators which maintain the balance of the body when the opposite foot is off, off the ground as in walking. Now, as a whole, the gluteus minimus muscle originates from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the anterior and inferior gluteal lines that is right here and it inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur on a ridge on its anterior surface right here. This is the posterior deep view of the right lower limb. The muscle you see here is the gluteus maximus. This is the gluteus medius and this is the gluteus minimus. Nextly, we have the piriformis muscle. It arises within the pelvis from the pelvic surface of the middle three pieces of the sacrum and the upper margin of the greater sciatic notch. This is a sacrum and this is its pelvic surface. The piriformis arises within the pelvis from the pelvic surface of the middle three paces of the sacrum that is from here and from here. This is the right hip bone and the piriformis also originates from the upper margin of the greater sciatic notch. This is the greater sciatic notch. The rounded tendon of the piriformis is inserted into the apex of the greater trochanter of the femur. The rounded tendon of the piriformis is inserted into the apex of the greater trochanter of the femur. Right here. The piriformis is supplied by the ventral rami of S1 and S2 and its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh at the hip joint. Now as a whole, the piriformis muscle arises from within the pelvis from the pelvic surface of the middle three pieces of the sacrum right here and right here as well as from the upper border of the greater sciatic notch and it is inserted into the apex of the greater trochanter of the femur right here. This is a lateral deep view of the right lower limb. The muscle you see here is the piriformis. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the gemellus superior. It originates from the upper part of the lesser sciatic notch. This is the lesser sciatic notch and the gemellus superior muscle originates from the upper part of the lesser sciatic notch 
right here. It inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. It inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. As you can see right here. It is supplied by the nerve to the obturator internus and its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh. Now as a whole, the gemellus superior originates from the upper part of the lesser sciatic notch right here and it inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur right here. This is the superior gemellus. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the gemellus inferior. It originates from the lower part of the lesser sciatic notch and it inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur just as the gemellus superior. The gemellus inferior inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur right here. It is supplied by the nerve to quadratus femoris and its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh just as gemellus superior. This is the inferior gemellus. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the obturator internus. It originates from the pelvic surface of the obturator membrane, the pelvic surface of the body of the ischium, the ischial tuberosity and the ischiopubic rami. The obturator internus muscle originates from the pelvic surface of the ischium, the ischial tuberosity and the ischiopubic rami. The area marked in red is the origin of the obturator internus. The tendon of the obturator internus leaves the pelvis through the lesser sciatic foramen and inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. It inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur, that is right here. It is supplied by the nerve to the obturator internus and its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh. Now, as a whole, the obturator internus originates from the pelvic surface of the ischium, the ischial tuberosity and the ischiopubic rami and it inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur right here. This is the obturator internus muscle. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the quadratus femoris. It originates from the upper part of the outer border of the ischial tuberosity. This is the ischial tuberosity. The quadratus femoris muscle originates from the upper part of the outer border of the ischial tuberosity that is right here. It inserts into the quadrate tubercle and the area below the it. The quadratus femoris inserts into the quadrate tubercle and the area below it. This is a quadrate tubercle. It is supplied by the nerve to quadratus femoris. And its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh. Now as a whole, the quadratus femoris muscle originates from the upper part of the outer border of the ischial tuberosity right here. And it inserts into the quadrate tubercle and the area below it. This is the quadratus femoris muscle. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the obturator externus. It originates from the outer surface of the obturator membrane and the outer surface of the bony margins of the obturator foramen. The obturator externus originates from the outer surface of the bony margins of the obturator foramen that is right here. The muscle ends in a tendon which runs upwards and laterally behind the neck of the femur to reach the gluteal region where it is inserted into the trochanteric fossa. This is the trochanteric fossa and the obturator externus is inserted right here. It is supplied by the posterior division of the obturator nerve and its action is that it is a lateral rotator of the thigh. Now as a whole, the obturator externus originates from the outer surface of the bony margins of the obturator foramen that is right here and it inserts into the trochanteric fossa right here. This is the obturator externus muscle. Finally, we have the tensor fascia lata. It originates from the outer lip of the iliac crest up to the tubercle of the iliac crest. The tensor fascia lata originates from the outer lip of the iliac crest up to the tubercle of the iliac crest that is from here to here. 
it inserts into the iliotibial tract 3 to 5 cm below the level of the greater trochanter. It is supplied by the superior gluteal nerve and its action is that it is an abductor and medial rotator of the thigh and the extensor of the knee joint. This is the lateral view of the right lower limb. This is the iliotibial tract and this is the tensor fascia lata. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.